Jabat al Nusra are the group becoming associated with some of the most violent images coming out of Syria public executions, beheadings, suicide bombings, and so on. But they're an incredibly secretive group who cover their faces. Their leader so far has refused to appear on video at all, he only releases audio statements. So, who are this group? What do they want, and how much support do they have? The Front of Defense for the People of Greater Syria, or Jabhat al-Nusra, made their first public statement in January last year. They claimed they were the Syrian Mujahideen from various jihadi fronts, returned to avenge the deaths of Syrians. They also claimed responsibility for a spate of suicide bombs and car bomb attacks. It was in May 2012, though, that they really came into mainstream coverage after a double bombing in Damascus that killed 55 people. But their history goes way back beyond that to the early 2000s. A large number of the fighters had come through the training camps of Abu Musab al-Zakawi. He was a Jordanian militant in Afghanistan and then Iraq. Zakawi sent his followers out around the Middle East to recruit for the fight in Iraq. It's alleged that a lot of the funding for it came from sympathizers in Saudi Arabia and Syria itself. It was a structure that flourished in Syria until the regime really cracked down on it in 2007. By that time, Zakawi was dead, but despite arrests and assassinations by the Syrian intelligence services, some of his followers escaped to Iraq, and Zakawi's networks were never destroyed. One of those to flee was thought to be Abu Muhammad al-Jalani, the leader of Jabhat al-Nusra. Although he has a name, the exact identity of the leader is still a closely guarded secret. In fact, there's still debate as to whether he's Syrian or Iraqi. He's never appeared in a video and attends most of his meetings with his face covered. However, it is known that al-Jalani had experience in Iraq which allowed him to recruit top Iraqi experts and Syrian jihadists from the group at the Islamic State of Iraq. Initially, it was hard to determine whether or not Jabhat al-Nusra were related to al-Qaeda or just a branch of the Islamic State of Iraq, a relationship which has recently come to the fore. More on that in a bit. According to the Killian Foundation's report at the start of this year, al-Jalani had recruited 5,000 fighters, meaning that they aren't the largest group, but they do have thousands more loosely affiliated members. Support for Jabhat al-Nusra was swelled by disillusionment with the lack of progress by the Free Syrian Army and the West's refusal to intervene. They were seen as a more effective group who refused help from the West. And that's partly because they think Western help could upset their ultimate aim of overthrowing President Assad to replace him with an Islamic state and implement Sharia law. They also carry out missionary and humanitarian work through Kissim al -Agatha. As an aside, and before we get back to the grim stuff, this is one of the weirdest shows of support for al Nusra that we've seen. It's a video of computer game footage describing itself as dedicated to the group. On a much more serious note, the actions of Assad's forces also build support for al-Nusra. When atrocities like the massacres in Banyas and Al-Baida happen, they fuel sectarian hatred and push people towards more extreme groups. Their experience in Iraq has also allowed them to get ahead. They have better weapons, more sophisticated tactics and the patience to engage in a war of attrition. Videos of them attacking air bases, reportedly taking on a chemical weapons factory and other military targets have also emerged. Despite committing to attack military targets rather than civilian ones and to avoid sectarian violence, some horrific videos have emerged showing beheadings, executions, sectarian violence in mosques and civilians being targeted, all carried out by groups claiming to be linked to al-Nusra. And after all the suicide bombings, the US declared them to be a terrorist group. <laughs> Blogger Brown Moses charted the development of a new group, the Islamic State of Iraq al-Sham, which finally confirmed the ties between the Islamic State of Iraq and Jabhat al-Nusra. The leader of al-Qaeda, Ayman al-Zawahiri, installed the Islamic State of Iraq's Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi as the new leader. Suddenly, videos started emerging left, right and centre, claiming association with this merged group.
But the merger doesn't necessarily mean the end for Javat al-Nusra. Some reports have been claiming that fighters are leaving because of the links with al-Qaeda, but others suggest that in some parts of the country, especially the West, they're still going from strength to strength. So Jabhat al-Nusra do have ties to al-Qaeda through the group the Islamic State of Iraq al-Sham. That should make the revolution even more complicated inside Syria because if the group Jabhat al-Nusra win the conflict then Syria could well be turned into an Islamic State. It was previously an entirely secular one. If another group win the conflict in Syria, they are still going to have the problem of Islamic extremism to contend with inside this once secular country. Let us know your thoughts about all of this in a comment. We would love to hear what you think and hit subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you guys again next time.